What's going on, y'all? This is your man Pristine back with another video. Welcome to the first initial thoughts and impressions for the Asus Zenfone Max Plus M1. Now, I'm really excited about this device. This is Asus's first device that's been released with an 18 by 9 aspect ratio. And you guys know how I feel about the 18 by 9 aspect ratio. Not to say that there's anything wrong with 16 by 9 if that's what you're still rocking, but I love the fact that they're making these devices with much smaller footprints and bigger screens, giving you much more screen real estate at a much more manageable size overall in the hand. And I really like that. And you're getting that same experience here with the Zenfone Max Plus M1. Now, before I get started with picking up the phone and checking out the hardware, um, I didn't I didn't want to bother with an unboxing, you know, as far as, you know, I, you know, it's, it's a box, you get a nice little presentation. Obviously, you get the device, you get the uh, you get the charge adapter, the cord, you know, the SIM ejection pin, and you get an adapter to transfer data from the old phone to this device right here if that's what you want to do. That's it. No case comes in the box. I was really surprised by that because I know that Asus, they're notorious for making sure that you've got all the key essentials in the box that you need. And typically, you know, there's always like a soft rubber TPU gel case in the box. And there was not one in the box with the Max Plus M1 here. And I'm a little disappointed by that, but no biggie. You know, I'll get on Amazon, seven, six, seven bucks flip me a little, you know, a little clear TPU case to really show, uh, show off this beautiful phone's cosmetics. And I'll just be up like that. All right. So spec sheet. We've got a 5.7 inch 1080 by 2160 pixel full vision HD plus display. As I mentioned, we've got the 18 by 9 aspect ratio. All right. Now we've got a MediaTek MT 675 OT chip. We've got an octa-core CPU. We've got a GPU Mali T860 MP2. We've got three gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of onboard storage. We do have micro um, micro SD expansion up to 256 gigs. Now we're running Android 7.0, fresh out of the box. I'm not really sure, you know, if you know if or when there's going to be an update to Oreo. I hope that's going to be coming soon. But as of right now, you're rocking with you know regular uh, nougat, fresh out of the box. And we're running the Z, uh, the Zen UI 4.0, which I'm a huge fan of. Um, I know a lot of people don't care too much for it. They they like more of the stock Android feel or look. You know, they said that the Zen UI looks looks too cartoony or it looks too childish. Hey, man, everybody's got their preference, man. I like it. You know, I'm a fan of stock Android, but I don't want all my phones to be stock Android because I don't want all my phones to look the same. You know what I mean? So I like the different skins that different different manufacturers house on the device over. Android give people you know some choices and things to play with and if you're not feeling it then man you know you can you know Nova launcher and man you can you know get the pixel launcher whatever kind of launcher you want to put on the device if you're not feeling the skin that comes fresh out of the box it's one of the good things about having an Android device all right now the cameras we got a dual camera setup on the back we've got a 16 megapixel main camera we've got an 8 megapixel secondary camera and this isn't a tele a monochrome or a telephoto lens this is a wide angle lens Okay, it's an 8 megapixel secondary wide angle lens with 120 degree field of view angle. All right, so you can get those wide angle shots. Now, the selfie camera is also 8 megapixels as well. And I believe that, I don't believe there's any 4K recording on this particular device. I believe the maximum amount of recording is 1080p at full HD, um, 30, 30 FPS, which, you know, I, hey, that, that, that works for me, you know. <clears throat> but we'll poke around with all that stuff when I do the dedicated camera video. Now, <clears throat> We've got a 4,130 milliamp hour battery, okay? So I'm expecting, I'm expecting for this phone to be a battery beast. That's a pretty big battery. And this, this MediaTek processor that's in it is supposedly a battery efficient processor, you know, kind of reminiscent to the Snapdragon 625. Now, I'm not sure if it's gonna perform as well as the Snapdragon 625 does, but as far as battery optimizations and staying power, this particular chipset that's in this particular phone is supposed to, 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 to manage things in a manner that's going to give you the best amount of battery life possible. There are battery optimizations that you can choose. You know, I would always recommend, you know, man, do your own battery optimization though, so that your battery's got that stay in power. Turn off Wi Fi if you're not using it. Turn off Bluetooth if you're not using it. Turn off Auto Sync if you don't need it. Turn off GPS if you're not using it. All those things, they fry your battery. And you'll, it, it's amazing how many people just you know, they sail through the day on their cell phones and they keep that stuff on and they don't even realize that it's on. And they're always complaining about their battery, always complaining about how they got to plug in and they can't keep it charged. And I'm like, look, I'm like, look, man, let me see your phone, man. 
You know what I'm saying? They'll hand me the device and I'll just start scrolling around through stuff and just turning off every damn thing because everything is on. It's like, yo, no wonder you couldn't keep a charge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there's plenty of battery optimizations on this device to really give your battery that staying power. But again, 4,130 milliamps, you should have no problem getting through the day. Now, all of this is contingent on how you use your device. You know what I mean? If you're a power user or power downloader streaming, you know, Netflix, Hulu, Spotify, or whatever your whatever your platforms are, the more you do that, then obviously, you know, you're going to go through your battery pretty quickly. But you still, it still should take a lot to run through this battery. Now, we don't have Type-C connectivity on this device. We've got micro USB 2.0. Now, some people may feel as though that is a, 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 a downsize uh, with this particular device. You know, a lot of people want, you know, that Type-C integration, and I understand that. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, I hesitated with buying the Honor 7X because it had a USB 2.0. And, you know, I agree with Marquez Brownlee, man. Type-C, all the things, man. I mean, I don't really feel like in 2018 we should be getting phones that's still rocking USB 2.0. But it is what it is, you know. And, again, you can't really knock these phones and, 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 and you know, just assume how they're going to perform without actually getting them in your hands. And so, you know, buying the Honor 7X, buying my Xiaomi Redmi 5 Plus, those are two excellent devices. They're rocking USB 2.0. And this is no different. This is also rocking USB 2.0. So when I saw, when I first read the spec sheet, when I saw that this phone was releasing and I saw that it had USB 2.0, then I wasn't too concerned about it because I've already got two beast budget, you know, budget devices that also have USB 2.0. And I get excellent performance and battery life out of both of those devices. And so I'm hoping that this is going to be able to join the ranks of the, uh, of the likes of those, um, those budget beast that I just named off. Now, the colors that you can get this in, you can get this in Azure Silver. This is Deep Sea Black, which is also the other color variant. And it's interesting because you'll see once I start picking up, picking it up and turning it around and really showing off the hardware, it, you know, it, it, it's called Deep Sea Black, but it has like a bluish tint to it. So it's like, you know, it kind of looks blue depending on the angle in which you're holding it. But then looking at it from another angle, then it kind of looks black. I mean, so, you know, sometimes when it's when you're looking at it while it's on its axis, then it looks black. Other moments, you know, you may tilt it a certain way, right or left, up or down, whatever, and it looks blue, you know what I mean? So it's kind of got this bluish black tint to it, which makes sense why they call it deep sea black, you know what I mean? So that's a very, you know, uh, 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 intriguing, you know, color variant that they uh, decided to rock with. All in all, it's a stunning looking device. Um, but as I always recommend, you know, you definitely want to get a screen protector. You know, if you're prone to dropping your device, definitely want to put a case on it to protect uh, uh, this beautiful piece of hardware. And um, like I said, this is an, a, a nice addition to the budget realm. Uh, this phone is $229.99. I just picked it up down at my local Best Buy. You can buy this at your best at your local uh, Best Buy. You can get this on Amazon.com. You can get it at Newegg.com, b &H Photo. You know, I'll drop a link in the description if you guys are interested in picking this bad boy up. All right. So <clears throat> other features, uh, we've got an FM radio, we've got Bluetooth 4.0, um, we've got some, some really cool audio integrations here that Asus put in. Um, it's called Audio Wizard. And, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say that this thing is as good as the, uh, the quad hi-fi DAC that is in the LG V30 or other LG devices, but I mean, man, you know, we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, you know, that is worth mentioning for a lot of you folks that like to plug in, but you're able to do some really, really cool things with the audio. I mean, tweaking different presets, you know, equal equalizer customizations to really get that sound quality the way you want it. And this phone, I mean, the audio quality is so magnificent. I mean, it upscales, you know, so you can look to get the best sound quality out of pretty much, you know, whatever type of headphones that you have. I mean, I know that, you know, I can hear the difference when just rocking in the car and it's connected to Bluetooth. You know, I stream everything through Spotify through Bluetooth. And so that's what I, that's how I rock out. And uh, man, it sounds, it sounds amazing, man. You know what I mean? But you do have the ability to customize you know, you know, headphones or, you know, if you're listening to it on a Bluetooth wireless speaker, you can get that sound that you want. Um, and I'm, and I'm really impressed with it. Okay. So, um, without further ado, let's pick it up and let's take a look at the hardware. Um, now, <clears throat> as I mentioned, you see the double tap feature right there. I mean, so you do have some touch gestures there. Here's our 5.7 inch display, 
absolutely gorgeous display. Um, and as I mentioned, you can see that 18 by nine aspect ratio. And this is another thing that I like. Whenever you lock the device and unlike it, you got different wallpapers that are very beautiful, very pleasing to the eyes. I'm a big fan of that. You know, that's not uh, that's not a new technology. I've seen that on other devices, Huawei Honor devices, you know, but it's a cool little feature to have. And so I like the implementation of that on the um, on the Max Plus M1 here. Um, but again, beautiful 5.7 inch displays. You can see that 18 by nine aspect ratio. Oh, here, let me turn the uh, brightness down a little bit because I think I had the brightness in like 50% or something like that. There we go. All right. So there's another, there's a better look at that, at that beautiful screen. Now you can see we've got a little bit of a forehead and a chin up here. You know, at the top, here's our eight megapixel uh, selfie camera. Here's our ear receiver. And then on the bottom, I thought that there was going to be some capacitive buttons, but you can see the buttons, the capacitive buttons are actually on screen. So it kind of makes you wonder, well, what's the chin for? I mean, they could have just, you know, soldered that down and just made the device even smaller. As I mentioned, I mean, this is a 5.7 inch display that's on, that's, that's being, that's housed in a phone that is 5.2 inches. And so it feels really, really, really good in the hand. As you can see, I mean, the edges, you know, we've got those curved edges from one side to the next that rounds up to the, to the side of the device. You know, it's a full unibody display here. You know, it's kind of got like that matte finish. And so it doesn't feel slick or slippery. And it's very reminiscent to me, in my opinion, of the Samsung Galaxy S8 when they first released it. You know, you know, just when you first held it in your hand, I mean, it's a 5.8 inch display, but yet the phone felt so thin and small in your hand. And so this, the, the Asus here, it kind of reminds me of that feel. I mean, I've got really small hands, but you can see I can, I can damn near get my whole hand wrapped around this device. I mean, so... You know, there's there's no problems, you know, managing this device at all. I mean, for me, at least, I mean, even with my small hands, I mean, it's not a, a cumbersome experience, you know, at 5.7 inches here. Now, maybe if it was six inches, maybe, you know, maybe I would have, a, you know, a little bit of a struggle, but no need to worry. I mean, there is a one handed mode. I'll show you guys that a little later in the video. So even if this is a little too cumbersome to hold, if you decide to rock out with this device, then you can just pop on the one handed mode and get that smaller screen real estate. And you can just go ahead and manage everything all with one hand. Um, so moving around to the right side of the device, we've got nothing but the power button that also doubles as the sleep button. And we've got the volume rocker. Now, interesting, both the power sleep button and the volume rocker have texture. Now, typically on most devices, the power and the sleep button is textured and the volume rocker is smooth. And so I guess they did, Asus did that to, you know, I guess, you know, just, you know, for people to be able to distinguish between, you know, what's a part of the phone and what's a button. Um, you know, if the phone is in your pocket and you're reaching around for it and you've got your hand or your, or your thumbs or your fingers or however you touch your device, you know, however, however you cuff your device, you know what I'm saying? The obviously the volume rocker is a little is, is a longer button, you know what I mean? So you still even if you're not looking at the device, I mean, I close my eyes and I can pick up a device and I easily be able to discern between, you know, what's the volume rocker and what is it? You know what I mean? So that shouldn't that shouldn't be an issue now. Top of the device, we've got a really tiny noise canceling microphone right there. Here's our 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It is at the top of the device. I know some of you guys may be a fan of that. Others prefer it to be on the bottom. I don't manufacture these things. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I just put the information out there, but it is present. It's just at the top of the device. All right. Now moving around to the left, to the left, we've got nothing but the SIM tray. And I, you know, I'm a fan of the SIM tray on this particular device because, you know, it's a dual nano SIM tray. But it also gives you the ability to have two nano SIMs in it and an SD card slot and an SD card, I mean. So, you know, conventionally in other devices, I mean, you know, they may have, you know, dual nano SIM capabilities and you can also use an SD card. But one of the SIM slots, you have to choose between whether or not you're going to put another nano SIM in there or if you're going to use that slot for an SD card. Well, with this one, you have two dedicated nano sim slots and then you have another dedicated slot uh, slot for an sd card for memory expansion so I, I i like that you know the fact that you can have two sims in this joint and an sd card for memory expansion 
I'm a fan of that. And I know a lot of other people are probably going to be big fans of that as well. Now, moving around to the bottom of the device, here's our USB 2.0. Um, connection. I haven't read anything about there being any kind of fast charge technology or anything like that. As I mentioned, it's a pretty big battery, so I, I can imagine that it's probably going to take a little while to fully charge this thing up from zero to 100. I haven't had the phone die on me yet, so I haven't charged it yet, so I haven't had the ability to test it, but I will. Um, and then we've got on the bottom here what appears to be or what looks like two bottom firing speakers. That, that'd be dope if that were the case, but it's not. Here's our bottom firing speaker here on the right, and then this is another noise-canceling uh, microphone here on the left. Now, moving around to the back. Now here, if you guys can kind of see that, it's a, slight, a slight bluish tint to it, but then when I hold it up like this, it just looks black. Very faint Asus branding right there in the back. Here's our perfectly placed fingerprint sensor. And this is that dual camera lens system that I, saw, that I told you about a little early in the video. Here's our 16 megapixel main shooter. This is the eight megapixel secondary wide angle lens. And then here's our LED flash with, with um, laser auto focus. All right, now, double tapping the device. I do like the ability to be able to do that. I mean, as far as gestures, I mean, you can double tap to sleep, double tap to wake. You know, uh, if the phone is sitting on its on, on its back and it rings and you want to mute it, you know, you can turn it over to mute it. You know, if an alarm is going off and you want to mute it, you can turn it over to mute it. The phone has the ability, like other Asus devices, um, if you want to launch the camera, you can take your knuckle on the lock screen and just draw a C with your knuckle. It'll open up the camera. If you're on the lock screen and you want to check the weather, for instance, you can just take your knuckle and draw a W and it'll pop open the weather app. So you can check, you know, you can check the weather. And there's a few different uh, gestures as well, things that you can draw that are going to open up different apps and things of that nature. You can customize the buttons on the bottom. And so if you can see the button orientation that I have, I mean, I'm a lefty, but I am ambidextrous. Uh, ambidextrous. I handle typically all of my phones in the right hand. And so I, I, I handle them just like this. And so it's much more convenient for me to just be able to, you know, hit that back button, hit that home button. And then we've got the recents key right there, you know, if I want to hit that. Now, on this particular device, you know, if you want to get that one handed mode, then you just simply double tap the home button. OK, and that 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 I get the one handed mode open for you. You know what I'm saying? And you can, you know, switch the orientation if you, you know, rock your phone in your left hand and you need that one handed mode or that smaller screen to be on the left side of the device, then you can just move it over to the left side. You know, like I said, I handle all my phones in my right hand, which is why I have it on the right. Now, if you want to get out of that, you can just see the little arrow, the, the arrows right there to expand the screen. You just hit that and then it gives you back that 5.7 inch orientation. You know what I mean? So um, swipe hard to the left or all the way to the left. Then you've got Google Now, and you can see scrolling up and down through Google Now, it's just completely seamless. Very helpful. I'm a big fan of Google Now. You know, I get a lot of information about devices and other things through Google Now. I mean, so I'm a huge fan of that. As I mentioned, Android 7.0 Nougat fresh out of the box. And so you guys already know when you swipe down once, well, let's see, there you go. You swipe down once then you get your quick toggles and any notifications that you may have if you have any and then if you want to access the rest of your quick toggles then you just go ahead and, you know go ahead and slide it down again and then as you can see asus you know they lace you with a bunch of things to toggle you know quick settings right there at your fingertip and so you've got a lot to edit and customize just to make sure that you're able to use this phone in the fashion in which you'd like to you know i'm a big i'm a big fan of that now when you head on over to the uh the settings menu you know, this this all looks familiar, I'm sure. Um, it's pretty similar to a lot of other. Um, <clears throat> oh, bumpy cam. My bad, y'all. But yeah, pretty similar to a lot of other Asus devices. You know, um, this, this, some people seem to, they, they feel like, you know, this is, you know, close to stock Android. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it has a, a little bit of a stock Android look to it. But, you know, again, it's that Zen UI. 4.0, you know, over, over Android Nougat. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I'm just, I'm a fan of the skin, you know, I'm a fan of the icons and, you know, the transition effects. I mean, just being able to have that little carousel effect, you know, just swiping your apps and it just looks like they're going to, you know, it's just, it's a beautiful 3d effect. I mean, just your applications look like you're going to pop out at the, you know, pop out of the screen at you. You know, but there's there's tons of different transitions that you can choose from. You've got a really, you know, a really heavy theme store that you can go into here. 
and just download a bunch of different themes and a bunch of different categories. You know, very reminiscent to Samsung and LG that give you the, the ability to also customize with different themes and icon packs and stuff like that. So you have the ability to do that here on the um, on the Zimphone um, Max Plus M1. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that. Just customizations and just being able to customize your device to look and feel exactly how you want it to look and feel um, so that it looks differently from a lot of other people's devices. You know, so um, let's see here. We just go to the camera real quick, take a couple of test shots. There's me right there. So again, as I mentioned, this is the eight megapixel selfie camera. This is the essential phone that's recording. Big ups to the essential phone. One of the dopest phones in 2017 that was released in my personal opinion. I don't care what nobody got to say about it. I rock out to this phone and I use it every day in some way, shape or form. You know what I mean? You know, so let's go ahead and take a quick selfie. Peace. Boom. Okay. Nice looking selfie right there. True to life colors. Again, you know, just stay tuned, you know, for that dedicated camera video that I'm planning on doing on this particular device. And let's go ahead and turn the camera around. See my little Android figure right here, my little stand. Now, as you guys can see here, I'll just move them over so a little more visible in the camera. So here's our standard view. And then you can see I can, if I hit the little icon button right there or the little mountains button just to you know let you know that you're about to expand that view go ahead and tap that there's that wide angle shot okay so we'll go ahead and take a wide angle shot very quick shutter speed and then we'll go ahead back to the main camera boom there's your main camera right there now when you scroll to the right or to the left my apologies then you get a bunch of these different color filters Scroll back to the right, get back to the viewfinder, and then scroll to the left. This takes you to the different modes. And so you've got auto, beauty, pro, super resolution, GIF animation, panorama, and time lapse. And so those are the only options that you've got as far as the different modes. Settings, you know, there's a whole slew of settings and things that you can customize and tweak the camera there. Um, we've got HDR, flash, timer, um, and I believe that there is an aperture mode as well to to blur out the background, but I'll play, I'll play with that a little more in the dedicated camera video. So you guys definitely stay tuned for that. Now we do have, we do also have facial recognition on this particular device. Um, you know, it, you know, it's not, it's, it's not as consistent. I mean, I, I find a, a lot of these facial recognition or scanning your biometrics to unlock the phones. I mean, they're all inconsistent. I mean, none of them really, none, none of them really work perfectly. You know what I mean? So this just, is just kind of, you know, reminiscent of the other devices that have that feature, you know, it, it's kind of spotty, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, you have to you have to hold the phone up, you know, your face has to be in the right position, the lighting has to be just right, you know, you can't be too far or too, you know, too far away or too close to the device or it's not going to read, but it is there. So you can set that up. As I mentioned, you got the fingerprint sensor right there. And this is definitely not the fastest fingerprint sensor by any stretch of the imagination. I like the fact that it is there. But it's not one of those fingerprint sensors that you tap and it just opens the device like a like a like a OnePlus device or an Honor or a Huawei device. I mean, you really have to lay your finger on it and then it opens up. It works 100 percent of the time as long as you're resting your finger on it, you know, but you'll see if I just tap it. Oh, wow. Well, wow. Well, I just tapped it there. That worked. Let's see. Wow. OK, well, maybe I guess you can tap it, but I mean. With my experience with this phone thus far, I feel like I've gotten the best results out of the fingerprint sensor just by, you know, laying my finger on the button and then it'll open up. Let's try that again, just for consistency. Tap. Wow. All right. Well, hey, man, there it is. <laughs> the camera don't lie. You know what I'm saying? So you can just tap this fingerprint sensor, but it's still not as fast as a, as a OnePlus 5T or, or, or a, a, a Huawei, uh, the, the Honor 7X or 
the Honor, you know, Mate 10 Pro or anything like that. I mean, it's definitely not as snappy as those fingerprint sensors. But again, I do like the fact that the fingerprint sensor is present. You do have the option to secure your device using that or the facial recognition. Or if you're old school and you don't like to use any of those methods, then you still got the pin codes, password, you know, draw little patterns or whatever, if that's what you're into. So you've got some different, uh, you've got some options as far as how you want to unlock your device. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all I can tell you right now about the new Asus Zenfone Max Plus M1. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Pristine Mobile Tech to support the movement and expo ex expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. And definitely stay tuned because I've got much more to come here in 2018. It's going to be an exciting year. We've got a lot of new devices coming out, and I plan on having as many of those devices featured on this channel as possible to help you guys make an informed decision on your next smartphone purchase. All right, so let me know what you guys think about the new Asus Zenfone Max Plus M1 here. Hit me up in the comments. I'll be sure to get back with you guys as much as I possibly can. Like I said, I'll drop the description in the link, uh, or I'll drop the link in the description down below if this is something that you're interested in. And uh, you guys are, yeah, stay safe, get spiritually fit. Okay, we are definitely living in the last days. And, you know, I know you guys come, you, you watch these videos to get the information about the phones. I'm a man of God. I've been saved in no way, shape, or form. Am I perfect? But again, as I told several people that hit me up in the comments about this, I really want to, you know, different people do different things with their platform, you know, but with this particular platform, yeah, is it a, is, is, is it a electronic, a mobile tech platform? Absolutely. But I'm not going to sit there and, you know, you know, hide you know, my religious beliefs when I feel like I've, I possess some information that can help save somebody or help bring somebody closer to Christ. You know what I mean? And, you know, if you if, if you get the message here of me witnessing to you more so than what I'm talking to you about these devices, how could I be mad at that? You know what I mean? How can I be mad at that? We're definitely living in the last days, people. Just look at all this. Look at all the chaos around, man. You know what I'm saying? If any of you have read the Bible if you've, and you've read Revelations, you shouldn't be afraid. And, and a lot of the stuff that you hear about nowadays, all these mass shootings and different killings going on and, and, and violence and, and just all kind of stuff, you know, you know, crooked politics and government and all that kind of stuff. All this stuff was written, man. It's all in revelations. None of this stuff is a surprise to me. And it, it's enough that it's enough for people to live terrified. But fear is of the devil. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't I don't walk around in fear. Because I know I got Christ. He's walking with me every step of the way. And he'll walk with you too. All you got to do is trust and believe in him and accept him. All right? Get spiritually fit. Keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives. I'll catch you guys in the next video. All right? All right. Peace.